VS Code in browser, totally self-hosted in your infrastructure. That's what we're going to see in this video. Stick with me to find out more. What's up guys, Medium Guy here. In this video, we're going to see how to run VS Code as a Docker container, which will be able to access through the web and mount our project files in it and access almost all the options that is available in VS Code through the web interface. So this is insane because actually you can host it in your infrastructure and access it through the internet from wherever you want. This image that I'm going to use comes with an authentication, so there are no worries about the unwanted access to this VS Code instance. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So actually, this is the image that I'm going to use, which has got only two tags. I'm going to use the Python 3.7 version. Of course, there are other VS Code images available. The reason that I've chose this image is that the access to the web UI is protected with an authentication and unless you don't have the password you won't be able to access the VS Code UI. So as always in order to run this I'm going to use a docker compose file so I'll move to the terminal in here I'll hit ls I've got the docker compose file over here. If I nano the docker compose file, I've got only one service in this. The image is exactly the same that we saw in the docker hub page. The name for the container that will be created will be VS Code. And the ports that will be exposed are 8443 and 8888. The first port will be exposed as HTTPS so the connections will be out of the box SSL certified and the volumes that will be mounted will be slash data and slash code inside the container which one will contain the codes and files that we create in the VS code and one will be the data for the VS code itself so they'll be persisted and the states won't be lost if ever our container gets restarted and the restart policy is set to always so the docker will handle the restart process if ever our container gets down by any reason so in order to run this i'll hit ctrl x to exit the nano and the command that i'll use is i'll say docker compose up dash d dash d to run it in detached mode so if I say docker compose ps, I'll see that the status for my container is running. The container name is exactly the same that I passed in the docker compose file and the ports that are mapped are 8443 and 8888 to the outside network so I'll be able to access them in my browser. And if I say docker compose logs I'll say dash dash tail and pass 100 to get the latest 100 lines. So as we can see in the logs, the password is auto-generated and actually this is the password that I'll use to access the VS Code web UI. So I'll get this copied and if I switch to the browser, I'll pass in the server's IP which the VS code is running on with the port 8443 and the protocol HTTPS. So if I hit enter, so as you can see, it'll automatically redirect me to the slash login page. And if I enter the exact same page that I copied from the logs, I'll hit the enter IDE button. And as you can see, it'll redirect me inside the VS Code's web UI. So here I can create files. I'll put in some value. I'll save it. I'll give the file a name. I'll hit enter. And as you can see, the file is created over here by hitting this terminal, new terminal. I'll get a shell session inside the container. And I don't know how crazy is that. So if I hit LS, I'll see the files that is in the working directory of the VS Code. So from here, 
I can do anything that I can do inside the running container. Like for example, I'll say apt update, I'll hit yes, I'll say apt install node.js, I'll hit enter and actually this is going to install node.js runtime inside the container and like for example I can create a JS project and run it using the node.js which I can access the files in the VS code through the web UI so I'll say node dash dash version and here I'll try to create a JS file I'll say console.log hi I'll give it a name and my file is created if I say node hi.js as you can see exact same thing is logged to the output so as you can see I've got the syntax highlighting over here I've got the search through the project button over here the git tab over here which will work exactly the same and also the extensions tab over here so moving back to the terminal i'll hit ls over here as you can see i have two directories created these are the exact same directories that i passed in my docker compose file so if i hit ls code you can see the two files that i created in the vs code ui and also if i say ls data you can see the files and directories that are created and related to the vs code itself so this is really crazy i really love this tool and the fact that this is in the browser and we can access it through the internet from wherever we want makes it even more crazier so that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed the content and it was useful for you in the next video we're going to see how to connect another container to this container and mount the files and by changing the contents through the vs code in the web ui we'll be able to see the changes in another container that is actually handling the specific project and by doing so we'll create a totally remote development environment which we'll be able to access through the internet without even storing any files in our local machine so I'll put all the files and configurations to my GitHub repository and I'll put the link down below. So if you want, you'll be able to access them easily. Don't forget to give a visit to my channel where I got cool videos about cool technologies. And also don't forget to like and subscribe, which will help grow the channel. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.